okay. Okay. Well, he's a member of Dr. Uh, Metro Christ Kenneth Church, Green. Dr. Kenneth Green. But he was one of the first, he was always on the call right when we first started. Okay. 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 It's seven o'clock, okay. gentlemen. Go ahead. Yeah, we're ready. We're, we're live. All right. Good morning, men of God. We'd like to welcome you all to the National Men's Prayer Call, uh, where we meet uh, every Tuesday and Thursday from 7 to 7.30 uh, p.m. Uh, a.m. Central Time. If you'd like to join us, join in with us, we have a Zoom line, and also you can join us on uh, Facebook Live. And this morning, we have a dynamic speaker, Dr. Wesley P. Ryan, who's going to um, provide us uh, with some uh, outstanding uh, information and content here this morning. So we're not going to take up a whole lot of time. We want to get this gentleman out of the bullpen and allow him and allow God to use him and have his way. Uh, but first, we want to uh, talk about the theme for uh, this month is impact and it says now that we are here uh, what's next and so that's what we are all about we are all about making an impact and all about providing uh, content from a spiritual uh, uh, connotation in order to uh, provide change for not only uh, other men but for ourselves, our, ourselves and our families as well so uh, this morning we want to also uh, pray for the Kathy family as uh, they lost uh, Darren Kathy. He was a listener from day one to the National Men's Prayer Call. And he was also a member of Metro uh, Christ Church, uh, where Dr. Kenneth Green is the uh, head pastor and also the founder of the National Men's Prayer Call line. So we want to uplift uh, Dr. Kenneth Green and his congregation, as well as the Kathy family when we go into prayer. Uh, but as usual, as normal, I like to start off uh, with the scripture and the scripture for this morning says Isaiah 64 and 8 but now O Lord thou art our father we are the clay and thou our potter and we all are the work of thy hand so we all are the work of the hand of the God that we serve so without any further ado we're going to go into prayer here this morning uh, dear and father we just come before you uh, as humble as we know how uh, with bowed head and humble heart. Father God, first and foremost, let's come to give you thanks, Father, and the glory and the praise you so richly deserve. Father, we just thank you on this day for brand new grace and brand new mercy. Thank you for touching us uh, with your finger of love. Father, allowing us uh, to open our eyes, understanding, Father God, that it was you who allowed us to rise this morning and not our alarm clock. Father, we just thank you, Father, for that we woke this morning and found everything to be well. Father God, found everything to be in play. And Father God, even though we are here to provide content, Father God, to uplift, Father God, to impact and empower men and women, Father God, across this nation, across this world. Father God, I want to just pray over the men on this prayer call. Father God, we want to be transparent, Father God, because we uh, have challenges, Father God, and we have things that we have to deal with, Father God, from a relationship perspective, from a business perspective. So, Father, I want to speak over every man and every family on this line, Father God. We, we just read in the scripture, Father God, that you are uh, the part of, Father, and we are the clay, Father. So we know that we are continuing to be uh, shaped and molded, Father God. Continue, Father God, to, to shape our minds, Father God. Continue, Father God, to change us uh, from the inside out, Father God, because we know, Father God, that first and foremost, our spirit and our heart has to be changed, Father God. The word, Father God, that we stand on, Father God, the word that we speak about, Father God, the word that brings us joy, Father God, the word that gives us peace in a troubled time, Father God, we have to have that word in our spirit, Father God. The word has to be planted and rooted within us, Father So We just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this platform, Father God, not only just to, uh, to change lives, Father God, but to touch lives, Father God. So, Father God, we just ask, Father God, that you continue, Father God, to watch over us, Father God, to continue to pray to protect us. Father, we understand that these are trying times, Father. We're dealing with uh, the pandemic, Father God. We're dealing with a government, Father God, that's unstable, Father. But you're still, Father God, large and in charge, Father God. You're still, Father, the King of kings, Father God. You're still the Lord of lords, Father God. So we know, Father God, that the government is in your hand. So we know, Father God, that as long as we give it to you, Father God, everything is going to be all right. So, Father, we just ask, Father God, that you uh, continue to uh, uplift our helpmates, Father God, and just give them the strength, Father God, and the wisdom that they needed in order to be a support system to us and allow us, Father God, to support them, Father God, in their endeavors, Father God, because we are some uh, are backed by some strong, Father God, women, Father God, some women, Father God, that... Uh, 
are there through thick and thin. So we just thank you, Father, for the for the covering of not only us, but for covering them. And Father God, we, we just thank you for our children, Father, and ask you, Father God, continue uh, to protect their minds, Father God. Continue, Father God, to protect them as they go through uh, virtual learning as while we deal with the pandemic and, and protect those instructors and uh, give them peace, Father God, and then give them the vision, Father God, that they need in order to be productive, Father God, in the virtual learning classroom. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for another opportunity to come before uh, your presence. And Father, we just ask, Father God, that you uh, protect the Catholic family. Father God, give them uh, understanding during that time of bereavement, Father God, during that time of loss, Father God. And we just ask, Father God, that you uh, continue, Father God, to lift them up and allow them to be strong uh, during this time uh, of bereavement, Father God. And just we offer our condolences, Father. And we just ask, Father God, that you can protect uh, Dr. Kenneth Green his mind, Father God, and allow him, Father God, uh, the strength that he needs, Father God, in order to get through this uh, trying time. Because I know that uh, he lost a dear member, Father, and we lost a brother. So, Father, we want to uh, lift our hands and wrap our hands around that family and to let them know, Father, that we're here for them and that uh, they are in good hands. And, Father, we just ask, Father God, that you give them peace uh, during the time of the storm. And, Father, we just ask, Father God, that you cover Dr. Wesley on this morning as he bring us uh, the word, Father God, for this morning. Father God, clear his mind, clear his heart. Father, speak through him. Father, allow him, Father God, to be bold. Allow his word to resonate, Father God, and to touch uh, each and every man and to touch uh, every family, Father God. And allow, Father God, that word to impact those who need it, Father God, because impact means change, Father God. Impact, Father God, means to uh, bring about a difference. And that's what we're here for. And so we thank you this morning. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. In your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen and amen. God is so certainly good. And this morning we are just um we're just excited to be able to lift his name up again. And um Anthony, we are uh, you know, between you and uh, and Reggie, y'all pray the horns off of Billy Goat. We ain't we ain't we ain't got to be scared when we got you in the in the in the house praying here. Um Listen, um, this morning, we're, uh, we're going to be moving forward with the concept uh, of impact. We're talking about impact this morning. And as we vetted our speaker this morning, um, you know, I was talking with him and we were just kicking it up. And so I said, what's, what's, what, now what's the name of the church? And he said, the name of the church is Impact DFW. So we're talking about impact. Now that we're here, now what? What's our next step? What's our next best move? in order to be able to make 2021 the one that's going to make the difference in our life, that's going to take us to that next level of winning and beginning to, to do all that we were designed uh, to do. Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Wesley is um, he's a youth and children's pastor at Impact DFW. He's also a corporate trainer. So this morning, as he uh, comes before us, he's going to share information for our transformation as well as our acceleration. So you know, buckle up, get ready, because we've got a brother that, like no other, that was that was God sent to bless us well. Are you there, uh, Dr. Wesley? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> All right. Once again, good morning to everyone. Thank you so much. Mr. Mack for the word of introduction and also Brother Anthony for that fantastic prayer this morning. Uh, as Mr. Johnny Mack said, I am the children and youth pastor of Impact DFW, where our lead pastor is Pastor Quasi Kamau, located here in Dallas, Texas. And uh, definitely excited to be a part of this platform. I want to shout out my brother Sakoni for, for, you know, tying me to this and Mobile representing the city and saying, hey, you need to be a part of this, man. It is a national men's prayer call where men are coming together and to be able to share the good news, the gospel, and, and help us to go from good to great. And just meeting some of the men this morning, I sent out the message. I got to shout out some of the brothers that's here from Impact. Uh, I see Tori's on here, Brother Johnny. I see you guys on here. So, Definitely just want to say <clears throat> this is an exciting time <clears throat> for 
for men, and this is an amazing platform for men to be able to come together first thing in the morning. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but this is better than a cup of coffee for me to where I can come in, I can wake up. You may got Folgers in your cup, but I got some praying men in my cup. And that's what's going to get us motivated, excited, fired up about the day. Because some of us woke up with marriage problems. Some of us woke up with children problems. Some of us woke up with job problems. Some of us woke up with sickness, but at the end of the day, God is still God. And when men can come together, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. But but I'm going to slow down before I take off. And I just want to start with a just a quick word of prayer as we get ready to dive into this, this amazing theme of impact. And like I told John and Maggie, it's just a coincidence that you, your theme is impact. The church I attend is impact. So I, I just know that God is all the way in this thing and I'm excited about it. Father God, we say thank you for this time, this privilege, God, to be able to speak your word. I ask God that you hide me now that they see less of me, none of me and all of thee. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. In thee, O Lord, we put our trust. Amen. I was telling Johnny, uh, you know, as I started kind of writing through this thing last night and diving into it and and God, you know, shook me this morning around three o'clock and said, okay, you know, we gonna, he hit me with a different download. And then, you know, and I, and I, and it's always someone got to download something because when you connect it, he'll download, you know, so he, he downloaded something because as we're trying to be and move in this space of saying, hey, impact, right? But I first have to ask these men a question how can we be impactful if we hadn't been impacted? You know, so how can we how can we shift to this place of being able to be impactful if we hadn't been impacted, if we hadn't had an experience, if we hadn't had an encounter, if we hadn't had a situation that has caused us to be able to call on the name of Jesus? And then the question was, like, like what now? Like, where do we go from here? And I just want to dive into the subject of maintaining a can-do spirit. For those of you who have your Bibles, if you turn with me to a very familiar passage, Philippians 4, <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, and the, the exciting part of the text is at 13, but the context of the text, we can start reading in verse 11. So Philippians 4 and 11, it reads, now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am in that with to be content. I know both how to be a bass. I know how to be abound everywhere. And in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And once again, I just want to tag this text with preaching, maintaining a can do spirit. Because as we shift into this time, like, where do we go from here? Like, men, we're coming out of one of the craziest years we've ever seen. We're coming out of this situation. And then at this point, some of us will be able to flip our feet up, cross our legs and say, okay, we made it. But the reality is now it's time to get going. Now it's time to get busy. And how do we maintain this can-do spirit? When you, look at, when you look at what Paul is pinning here, Oftentimes people, when you look at sports athletes, superstars, politicians, everybody will refer to this text and they'll say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. But the way that they are portraying this text, it can come across as if God is this genie, this genie in a bottle. Like just because I know God, everything is going to be all right. Just because I know God, I'm going to win the football game. Just because I know God, I'm not going to go through anything. Just because I know God, everything's going to work out in my favor. But the reality is this, Paul was not pinned this text before he went into prison. Paul was not pinning this text before he went to court. Paul was pinning this text from prison. Paul was in the situation. He was in the midst of the turmoil. He was in the midst of the chaos. But as he was pinning this text to the church of Philippi and this, this encouraging letter, letting them know that in whatever situation that I find myself in, I know how to be content. What, what Paul is saying is that I know how to pause and say, Lord, thank you. You know, if if as men, sometimes we get on a on a 
on a course of trying to chase success, trying to chase these things, trying to chase after so many things, trying to trying to be like the Jones. We want the car that he got. We want the suit like he got. We want the job like he got. But Paul says, in whatever state I find myself in, I know how to be content. I know how to say, Lord, thank you for the house that I got. Lord, thank you for the car that I'm driving now. Lord, thank you for the job that you've given me now. Lord, thank you for allowing me to come out of 2020 and finding myself right here. Paul is saying, I know how to say, Lord, thank you. But when we look at Philippians 4 and 13, I can do. I just want to look at those first two, I can do. Men, we can't lose sense of I can do. We have to have a sense, that sense of connection of can do. So men have allowed our past to allow us to fall victim of losing our can do to where how you were brought up, what mama wasn't there, daddy wasn't there, these situations to allow that to impact, I can do. But if your can do is connected to you, then it's easy to lose it. But if your can, if your can do is connected to him, then it's easier to hold on to it. So you got to understand when Paul is saying, I can do all things, not some things, not most things, not a few things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Let's think about it like going to the gym. When we go to the gym, many of us are, many of us already woke up January 1 and told that lie that we were going to go to the gym, lose 15 pounds, and we were going to do that. We were going to get stronger. We were going to get back in that suit that we wore back in 98. You ain't going to fit in that suit no more. Your wife been telling you to donate it. Get rid of it. Don't nobody even wear a corduroy no more. But anyway, but we're going to go into this thing. We're going to get back into the gym. We're going to do this. We're going to walk. We're going to do all this stuff. But we know that when we get a trainer and then we get into the gym. And one of the things that I hate about stopping working out and starting back working out is the pain that falls in the muscle. That anybody know that work, it don't matter how long you've been working out. Anytime you stop and start back, you're going to be sore. And then that soreness, and then as you're, as you're pushing the weight, as you're lifting the weight, that soreness come because the soreness is the muscle breaking down and then building itself back up. A lot of us don't want to go through the breaking down process. We want to get to the celebration. We want to get to the suit, but we don't want to go through the struggle. We want to get to this size and this statue, but we don't want to go through the process. And the process, a part of the process of being able to get to that point is that there's going to be some soreness. There's going to be some pain. There's going to be some sweat. There's going to be some mornings you don't want to get up. You're going to have to drink your water. You're going to have to eat right. But the reality is, do I trust in the process of being able to get to that next level, to where in order for us to do the things that we are trying to do, in order for us to say, where do we go from here? What happens next? That starts with you. That starts with a mindset. That starts with the ability to say, I can do it. I can accomplish it. Sometimes you got to wake up and tell yourself and be able to encourage yourself. Look at and be able to say, look out, man of God. You are somebody. You are a king. You are destined to win you have to when when i wake up in my bathroom i have about seven sticky notes and these sticky notes have been there for like literally three years i have to put tape on them now so they still stay up there but these sticky notes are affirmations because i can't depend on i can't depend on what if 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 my wife is going to tell me great job i can't depend on if society is going to tell me if my mom is going to tell me i have to be able to so and one of those affirmations is this scripture that i can do all things through christ that strengthens me and as i go through these affirmations in the morning i'm encouraging myself in order to be able to maintain a can do spirit because the reality is the enemy is busy all day the enemy wants to knock us off our square all day the enemy wants to try to throw us off our course and we have to have a mindset of focus a mindset to where i say i look towards the hills from which cometh my help because my help comes from the lord i'm not trying to do it in my own strength i gave it over to lord to to the lord years ago so as we move and as we navigate through this process we see that 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 paul is encouraging this church paul is writing, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And then when we go to where down to verse 14, now withstanding ye all well done that 
ye did communicate with affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only, letting them know that 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 you're going to find yourself in a position where everybody ain't, everybody's not going to be your cheerleader. Everybody's not going to say, go boy, go boy, you can do it. Everybody's not finna invest into your dream. Everybody's not to get ready to invest into what God has poured into you. We can't get so caught up in who's going to help me versus identifying with who, who gave you the vision. Who was the person that planted that seed in you? I did a training several weeks ago, and it was these CEOs. It's about 30 CEOs coming in, um, they own these million dollar companies, and, and we were going through this training of leadership and development. And, and as I'm training these guys, you know, there was this undertone of negativity. It was, it was always somebody else's fault. It was my general manager's fault. It was my call taker's fault. It was my technician's fault. It was this person. It was my marketing person's fault. Um, I don't know my numbers because my accountant didn't give me access to my QuickBooks. It was, it was always somebody else's fault. And then I went back and I asked them, I said, when is the last time you've dreamed about your business? Not, not the nightmares, not the what I got to do, how I'm going to pay this. How, when is the last time you dreamed about what God had given you? When is the last time you got excited about your vision? And I want to ask that same question to the men on this call. When is the last time you dreamed? about what God had given you, what, what God has shown you? When is the last time when you actually got excited about the house that you've seen, the family? When is the last time you've actually dreamed about your child graduating from high school, your child graduating from college? When is the last time you dreamed about the job that you wanted? When is the last time you actually got excited about what God has given you because God called each and every one of us for a purpose kingdom, man. God, God has already ordained in your destiny for greatness. So when is the last time you got excited for what God has called you to do? You say, well, Wesley, I don't know exactly what God has called me to do. So that then that leads me to ask you, when is the last time you asked him? Because grandmama say, I can just call on him late in the midnight hour and that his line is never busy. That one, 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 one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Ghost. When is the last time that you said, God, show me where you want me to go. God, lead me where you want me to be. God, speak into my heart. God, help me to be the husband that you want me to be. God, help me to be the father that you want me to be. God, help me to be the boss that you want me to be. God, help me to be the employee that you call me to be. When is the last time that you called on him? When is the last time that you got excited about your blessing? When is the last time that you walked through your house and said, Lord, thank you for my kitchen. Lord, thank you for the bedroom. Lord, thank you for the garage. Lord, thank you for my wife. Lord, thank you for my children. When is the last time that you said, Lord, thank you for my brother. Lord, thank you for Johnny Mac. Lord, thank you for Sakoni. Lord, thank you for Benny. Lord, thank you for Tony. When is the last time that you got excited for what God is doing in somebody else's life? Because that's the kind of God that we serve. We serve that kind of God, that God that that, the God that they hung up on Calvary, the God that they pierced in his hands, that they riveted his feet, the God that, that, that went down into a barber tomb, the God, I'm talking about that God, that God that on the third day rose again with all power in his hands. When is the last time you got excited about that God? The God that can cure cancer. The God that can change depression. The God that can turn things around. When is the last time you got excited about that God? The God that can make things come together. Make changes in your life. We have to be able to maintain a can-do spirit. It's not time, men, to kick our feet up, throw our head back. It's not time now to say we made it through another year. It's time to get busy. It's time for us to invest in ourselves again and invest in our community. That, that, that dream that you hung up in the back of the closet, I dare you to go dust it off and put it on again. That, that, that very thing, that, that thing that God spoke into your life Years ago, that, that thing that you used to dream about when you was 12, 13, 14 years old, and now life happened, 
and you feel like, how am I going to accomplish it now? Because I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. How am I going to pull my marriage back together? I can do all things through Christ. That how am I ever going to be the father that they need? Because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's how you do it, my brother. As we prepare to close, as I prepare to pray out, my, I want you to, in your mind, grab hold to your dream. Grab, grab hold to that thing in your mind. Whatever it is, if it's, if it's better this, be a stronger this, whatever it is that you're trying to be, I want you to grab hold of that right now in your mind. Because what I, what I, what I want you to understand is that there are men on this prayer line that's, that's praying for you. There are some gap standers on this prayer line. There are some brothers that I know that can get a prayer through. Father God, right now in this season, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, thank you for this word, God. Thanking you for this opportunity, God. Thank you for this privilege, God. We ask right now, God, that you allow, God, whatever that thing is, that dream, God, to be ignited again, God, that fire to be ignited again, God, that passion to be ignited again, God, that as we have now come out of 2020, God, diving into 2021, God, that let the excitement, God, and let it begin with you, God. We ask right now, God, that you restore marriage, you restore family, you restore finances, God, you restore health, God, you restore store fitness god we ask right now god that you bring back god into divine order god that that men are the head of the household god we ask right now god that you set back god in divine order god the the king's men god that these men god that each and every thing that they touch god will be blessed god that everywhere they feet trod god will be blessed god we ask right now god that every man represented on this call god that you bless them now god from the crown of their heads god to the soles of their feet god that when their when their wives look look at them, God, they see kings, God. When their children look at them, God, they see kings, God. When the community look at them, God, they see kings, God. Help us, God, to be the kingdom men, God, that you've called us to be, God. We ask right now, God, that you allow us to maintain a can-do spirit. Yes. We ask right now, God, you allow us to be impacted so we can be impactful. Yes. We ask right now, God, that you bless this platform you bless the presenters, the facilitators, the speakers, and allow this thing to grow without boundaries, without walls. In thee, O oh Lord, we put our trust. Amen. Yes, God. Amen. Amen, God. Thank Amen. you. Man. Amen. Thank God you. bless you, my brother. God bless you. I, I knew the fellas were in for a treat, but I didn't want to hype you up too much. But I knew that the, that the Lord was definitely going to show up and show out. I am so grateful that uh, God has allowed us an opportunity to actually uh, have you on. And I'm going to be doing a recap real quick and talk about maintaining a can-do spirit. I mean, every man needs to know how to have a can-do spirit because we face things that really seek to tear us down. Well, the first thing you said was about being impactful. And in order to have a can-do spirit, you have to be impacted so you can be impactful. So when God impacts you, then you could go and impact others. And you talked about being content or be content, how we as men need to be thankful for where we are. That doesn't mean the fact that we stop striving or thriving for a better life, but being thankful for where we are. You said, don't let your past uh, put out your can do. And a lot of us, we've had issues in our past that have, have been a hindrance to us. They've been a weight, but the in fact, but the word of God tells us to lay aside every weight that so easily beset us so we can't let our past put or put out our can-do spirit. And you said that even when you're doing working out, the fact that your muscles are, they are being broke down to be built up. And as men, we know that we have gone through situations where we've been broke down, but in the end, as we continue to trust God and do what's right, God will build us up. You told us to trust the process. That means that we have an opportunity to actually believe God in spite of what we see. Yes, and that was really encouraging. You even told us to encourage ourselves. And I know for a fact there have been times when I've had to be my own cheerleader, when I've had to be the own person to pick me up and dust me off. But I know that it was God through me. But if you don't value yourself, you have a hard time doing that. But God valued us enough that he sent his son to die for us. And then you even, you even asked the question, when was the last time you dreamed? When was the last time you dreamed? And I know for, a self, for myself that 
that I have never felt more like a child when I was creating something. In fact, when I was fulfilling the dream that God had placed in my heart. Yeah. So I want to encourage every man on this call, everybody that is, that is listening, that is tuning in, even the ones watching the replay, don't allow this word to sit dormant. Don't allow the, the birds to come and pluck these seeds out. Take them and hide them in your heart that you may be able to be the person and be the man that God is calling for you to be because the world needs us even today. And with that being said, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer and we'll close out. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the chosen vessel that you sent to present it. We thank you for the listeners and those who are watching. We ask right now, Father God, that you would just help us hide this word in our heart, that we may not sin against you. But Lord, that we may be the men that you are calling for us to be even today. We thank you, Father, for this National Men's Prayer Call platform and for everybody that has a hand in putting it together. God bless each and every one of us according to your needs and your riches and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. 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 Fellas, I don't know about y'all, but I've gone to church today. <laughs> I'm telling you, I thank God for each of you. This has been a blessing. Right on, Dr. Uh, Dr. Preen. Great job. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Next time we bring you all, you need to bring some band-aids with you, brother, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Amen.